All right, hey everybody. Um, so I just realized that I never actually went through tutorials for Cheat Engine. Um, I know they've changed a bit since like, I don't know, when the first time I ever did them was probably like version 6.1 or something at, when they came out and I, they've changed since then. And uh, I think there's probably a few people want to figure out how to go through them if you get stuck. Um, some of them are really basic, some of them are a little more complicated, so I think we'll just go through and see if we uh, have any problems with them. So. So this one's basically uh, a, a pretty basic one. So let's see. Uh, this wants you to select tutorial.x as the, I guess it's just going to be this one here. And it's X unless you renamed it, select it and click OK, blah, blah, blah. All right, the process one should be now, type of C, process now. Click Next, cool. So exact value scanning. So. You see at the bottom of this window the text health blah. Each time you hit me, your health gets decreased. Sure. Done. Okay, makes sense. So I think this wants you to pretty much find the value of the health. So let's see, 96, it's now 95. There it is. Blah, blah, blah. So we're going through. It wants me to change the value to 1000. Did it. Save it. Just freeze it for fun. Done. Okay, so when it's done, click hit me, you will lose some of your health. So, man, these aren't terribly interesting. <laughs> okay, so this is an unknown initial value. So, I'm just going to unfreeze that and clear that out. So, now we want to find out that the values between 0 and 500, and each time, blah, to find the value. So I want to do an unknown initial value. So we're going to search for, we'll do a new scan. Unknown initial value, first scan. That was nice and quick. Okay, so we'll go to, I got hit. So we're going to do decreased value, next scan, hit again. Decreased value, I saw a decreased by I think three. So we'll do that. Um, I'm thinking it's probably this one because setting the value between zero and 500, and that's the only one that's between zero and 500. So I'll do that, and that looks like it was the one. Well, so far these are pretty basic. Um, let's see. The previous drill is used by to scan, but some games store information so called floating point notations. Uh, property event, simple memory scan for finding it the easy way. The floating point is a value of some digits behind the point. So you can see your health and ammo. Both are stored with floating point notations, but health is stored as a float and ammo is stored as a double. Click on hit me and lose some health or shoot to decrease your ammo with 0.5. You can have both values set to 5000 or higher to proceed. Okay, so I guess what this is wanting you to do then is set to float. Um, health is at 100. I mean, it's pretty common, I guess, for health to be at 100, or to be a float. So we'll do hit me. It's now 98.6. Yep, so that, that works. So we want that one to be uh, 5,000. And then they want the hell, or the ammo. So let's do new scan for, you know, that's a double. It's kind of pointless, and it's right there, so done. <laughs> That's stupid easy. <laughs> okay. Um, step five. Let's see. Sometimes the location is stored changes when you restart the game or even when you're playing. Oh, so I think this is about pointers. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So first try to find the address. So we want to find the address. We'll start with, you know, we'll say it starts at uh, 100, just to try a four byte. Now we're at 308. All right, so it looks like we found it. Let's try to lock it to 500. Nope, that was not the value. So let's see. Um, let's actually just do this. Let's do all. So we know it's 794-ish. Let's change it. Now we got a 489. It didn't work at all. Interesting. And 
Trust the task launcher and then the trust list wouldn't work. So I did not find it. So I was doing okay, let's do a new scan, let's go 936, change value 652, it's probably this one. We'll change it to 5000, freeze it. Nope, that can't be it either. 48, 814, huh, well, this is interesting. Four seventy six. Oh, this one is a huge pain. <laughs> this should totally be working. Refiners, minor trees, blah blah blah. Hmm. Well, how about I unfreeze this, and we'll change the value a bunch of times, and maybe it's just not working right. Maybe it's automatically smoothing, so let's just do that. So we found that address. Let's find out what writes to it. Yeah, change the value. Okay, there's something writing to it, and we want to... Oh, I'll save the code. <laughs> Okay, so it just wants you to just go here and knock out this statement, so done. Okay, change value, next. Okay, cool. So that's good. That was, um, I guess I should have just read, read the thing. That would have probably worked out real well. Uh, the previous step, I explained I use code to find it to handle changing locations, but that method alone won't make it difficult to find address you want. That's why there are, that's why these are, there are pointers. Find two buttons. One will change the value, and the other changes the value and location of the value. Except you're leaving the assignment, but it helps a lot if you do. First, find the address of the value when you found it. So this is pointers. Okay. All right. So this will be fun. So first, we want to find the value. So we've got 100. Let's change the value. Now we're at 452. Boom. There's that. So I want to find out what writes to that address. There it is. This, this is what writes to it. We have EDX. So there's not any particular thing there other than we have this address, which is 1866F00. So, okay, I guess all I need to do in that case is type that in. So let's do 1866, just put a zero in there just for fun. F zero zero. You know, we have no offset, so it's going to give me a good old fashioned nothing. That's interesting. Let's try browsing that memory region. It's been a really, actually, no, I'm dumb. I know what I need to do. <laughs> it's been a really long time since I did it this way. So in this case, I want to search for a hex value, and I want to search for the EDX, so 01866F00. That gives me a bunch of different ones. Why did I have it like that? Let's just do four bytes. Let's do 01866F00. There we go. So I got that. And the value is that, and the address is that. So if I add an address manually, and it's 006, actually, sorry, I gotta make it a pointer. 00645360. There we go. So that's the actual pointer. So now I should be able to change pointer. I should change it to 5000. Ah, crap. <laughs> Let me try that again. I was not ready. So five thousand go, yeah, I got it. All right, so that was uh, that wasn't too bad. So basically, what that was doing was, sorry if you weren't following me completely. So what we did was basically we found the value, which was this value here. Let me erase all this extra stuff. We found that value in this address, and what we did 
Was it that address? Yeah, it was that address. So we found that value, and we found out what writes to that address, which was here. If you pull up the, actually if you just double click this, it'll show you this window, which I have up here. And what you want to do is you want to look at what it says the probable address is, which is 1866F00. Um, what it's showing you here is the assembly, but you can pop open the show assembler, it's right here. And, you know, that's cool. Not really important for what we're doing, but it's cool. Um, but <laughs> what it's telling you is you have, it's moving the value BDX into EAX. EAX is this value here, which we're not really worried about. EDX is the actual place that's it's getting the value from. So what you want to do is you want to search for what currently has that value in it. And when you do that, you got to check hex here, and you want to search for four bytes or whatever you know type of variable you think it is. Shouldn't really matter all that much to be honest, um, but just cuts down the options a lot more when you select something specific, not just all. But you do that, and then it'll come up here, and you'll find this number here. This is the address of your pointer. So then you add an address manually, go to pointer, type in that address that you just found. Um, if you had an offset here, which possibly one of the next tutorials will involve that, you'd add that offset into right here, and that would give you the next number. But this is uh, the end of this one, so we'll start with tutorial 7 uh, in the next video. So we'll see you next time.